By the end of the series, you'll know how to create a modern simulator in Roblox. I've already created a series on this topic before, how to create a simulator in Roblox Studio, which has spanned over 30 episodes. Through that series, I took an immense amount of feedback and criticism on how I can improve my videos for teaching you guys, as well as improving my own code while working on countless other projects during the same time. So my anticipation is to make this series one of the best on YouTube on how to actually begin developing your own game on Roblox, and hopefully by the end of the series, you guys can let me know how I did. In this series, we'll be creating our own version of the Clicker Simulator by Pressure Studios. On screen right now is a sort of course overview where you can see all the different topics that we'll be covering in this series. While going through the series, we'll most likely add even more topics to this as well, and I'll certainly be looking at the comments to get feedback from you guys to see what you also want me to add to this as well. Now, I'd also like to highlight our Discord. We have a community Discord where a lot of people just like yourself who are watching all of my other tutorials come in and ask questions. So if you're having an issue while watching a video, join the Discord and most likely there will be somebody who has the exact same issue as you that already posted this in the Discord so you can easily get help. And one last thing, I have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to all the script and the game file and models and other things like that that I make during my videos, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With all that being said, let's hop directly into studio. Now inside of my studio, you guys can see inside of my workspace, I already have a little map. Keep in mind, if you want access to the map, you can get it from the Patreon, but otherwise this map doesn't actually matter. It's all just for aesthetics and visuals, and it's not going to have any effect on our scripting or anything like that. With that being said, what we're going to do for the first episode is start scripting out our player data. Now, in my previous series, the way that I did player data was horrible. So with this brand new series, I'm really happy to start introducing you guys to the best and easiest way that you can actually manage your own player's data. It's super, super simple. What we're going to be using to manage our player data is actually called a module or a library, and the specific one that we're going to be using is the profile service module. If you'd like to access this, there's a link down below in the description to this page, which you guys can go to. What you're gonna wanna do though, is you're gonna wanna get the library model by going onto the Roblox website right here and clicking the get button. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to access it from your toolbox, maybe in your recent models or other things like that. Then just go ahead and click on that and it should add it directly into your workspace. To keep everything organized, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the server script service and add a brand new folder. And we're gonna rename this to player data. Additionally, we're gonna create another folder inside of the server script service and we're going to rename this to libs l-i-b-s libs is short for libraries in a lot of other coding languages when you're basically using somebody else's code to do something for you that's usually referred to as a library in lua or the roblox community we commonly refer to libraries as modules or other names like that personally i call them libraries so that's why i make a folder either in my server script service or replicated storage called libs so that i know this is where all the things that i didn't create myself and this is where all the libraries exist in my game so we're going to put the profile service in side of that folder. And now we're done with that module. We're never actually going to touch that module. What we're then going to do is actually start setting up our player data. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to insert a module script inside of the player data folder. And we're actually going to rename this to template. Then we could also rename the variable as well from module to template, just like that. Now what template's actually going to be set to, it's going to be set to a table with all of the data that each player should have. This might sound confusing. Don't worry. Just keep following along with me and you should be able to get it by the end of this episode. If you use leader stats in any of your game, you can also think of those as your player data as well. Now, pretty much every single simulator in the entire Roblox world has at least one commonality, and that is that they always have two different currencies. So for clicking simulator, they have clicks, and we're going to set the default value of that to zero. So when a player joins our game, they're going to start off by having zero clicks. And the other currency that we're going to have in our game is called gems, and we're also going to set that to zero as well. Now, if we set this to 100, then when a player first joins our game, they will start off with 100 gems, but we want to start them off with zero. Now, that's all we're going to do for the template so far, because we're not going to do too much in this episode, but every single episode where we actually start to add more and more player data, all we have to do is come back to this table right here and add it to it, and it is extremely simple. You're going to love it. The next thing we need to do is we need to go back inside of the player data folder and add another module script, and this is actually going to be called the manager, because this is the module script that we're going to require in our other scripts if we ever want to access a player's data. So we can also rename the variables as well to manager, and now inside of here, all we're going to do is actually create another variable, and we're going to say manager.profiles equals, and then a blank table. The way that the profile service basically works is that every single player gets their own profile, which holds all of their data. So whenever we generate the player's profile, we're going to store it in this table right here so that we can go into other scripts and access this profile and get the player's data. Now that's all that we're going to do with this script for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a script inside of the player data folder, and we're going to rename this to data. Inside of here, we're going to basically script up the entire system for whenever a player joins the game or leaves the game and load their data and unload their data when it should be. Also, one comment I always got on my other videos was 
supposed to increase my font size. I'm not sure why it wasn't increased before because I thought it should have been. It seemed like it reset, but I just increased it again. So please let me know in the comment section if this size is good for you or if you need it to be a little bit larger. Anyway, let's start declaring some variables up here. So local players, and we're going to get the players service. We're also going to want to get the server script service as well. Now that we've gotten both of those services, we then need to get the template and the manager module. So we're going to say local template equals require server script service dot player data dot template. And then to get the manager, we could just duplicate that variable and then just rename it just like that. We also need to get the profile service as well. So I'm just going to duplicate this once again. Then from the server script service, we're going to go into the libs folder and get the profile service just like that. And then we just got to rename the variable. And now that's all good. The next thing we need to do is create a specific store for the profiles. So we're going to create a variable called profile store, and we're going to set that equal to the profile service dot get profile store. Now, the first argument we need to pass through this is a specific key. If you guys have ever used data stores before, you need to do a similar thing where you basically come up with your own key. Now, for all my games, when I go into production or release a brand new update, the store is always production. Now, if this key is different, like let's say, for instance, we just started up our game and it was with production and then we changed it to five, it would actually reset all of our data because we just changed the store that we're listening to. So if I start this with six, all of our data will be wiped. But if I put it back to production, all the data that was already in production will be used once again. So basically, while I'm testing, I'll usually use the test profile store. And then when I go to production or push out an update, I'll always make sure that I put that to production so that the players always have their same exact data. That second argument that we need to pass through to here is our data template. So we're going to say template just like that. And now we have our profile store. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually create a command for loading a player's profile. So we're going to say local function load profile. And this is going to accept a player. Now with most of my variables and arguments, I like to assert its type so that we can get better auto completion. If you guys are unfamiliar with type checking and stuff like that in Roblox, you guys can check out my other video or follow along and you might even learn it while we go on. So the type of this variable is going to be a player because of course, when we call this function, we're going to pass through a player. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to get that player's profile. So we're going to say local profile equals profile store. Make sure you say store, not service. And then we're going to use a colon to call a method on this. And we're going to say load profile async. Then we need to pass basically another key to this. And the key is going to be player underscore dot dot player dot user ID. So now each player has their own unique key for accessing their profile. Now that we've got their profile, we might not actually have it. So we need to check if we do. So we're going to say if not profile then. So this means that if we didn't actually get their profile, then what we want to do is we actually want to kick that player. So we're going to say player kick. And now we can pass a message inside of here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called kick underscore message. And that's going to be all capital letters because it's going to be a constant. This message is never going to change. And this is going to be equal to a string which says data issue. Try again shortly. If issue persists, contact us. Okay, so that's going to be our kick message. And then we're going to put that variable inside of this player kick right here. So if the player's profile doesn't load, then we're going to kick. And then we also want to say return as well, because we want to stop the script right there. Now, if we are able to find the player's profile, we need to run a couple of methods on it. So we're going to say profile, and then we need to say add user ID, and that's going to accept the player dot user ID. Then we need to run reconcile on it. So we're going to say reconcile. And what reconcile is going to do is it's basically going to look at our template and make sure that the player's profile has all that data. And if it doesn't, then it'll add the new data to it. And then finally, we need to say profile, listen to release. And inside of here, we're going to create an anonymous function. And then what we're going to do is we are going to kick the player and we're going to kick them with the kick message once again. After that, we need to check if the player is descendant of and then the player's service. And if that equals true, then what we want to do is we want to use the manager and get the profiles table. And then we want to add our player to that table and we want to set the variable equal equal to the profile. So now both the player and the profile are inside of that table. So anytime we index that table with a player, we will get their profile, which is perfect. But if the player is not a descendant of the player service, then what we want to do, we want to call profile release just like that. Now there's one more thing that we want to do. And when we're listening to the release, we want to remove the player's profile from this table right here. So what we're basically going to do is we're just going to copy this. We're going to say manager.profiles index that with the player. And then we're actually going to set that to nil so that we remove the player's profile from that table. Now that we have this function all set up, what we then need to do is we need to listen for players to join and then call this function for them. So we're going to say players dot player added and we'll connect that to the load profile function. Now additionally because we're in studio this script could load after other players have already joined the game so then we also need to loop through all the players that are currently in the game as well. So we're going to say for underscore player in players get players do and then we'll say task dot spawn load profile and pass through the player just like that. So now that we load their profile and we add it to our table we also need to make sure that we're removing this as well when the player leaves otherwise we're going to have data leaks. So we want to make sure that we listen for when they're leaving. So players.player removing, connect, create an anonymous function inside of here, which is going to accept the player. And then we need to get their profile. We're going to say local profile equals manager.profiles index that with the player.
player. And if we do find the profile, so if profile, then we just want to call the release method on the profile just like that. So now we have our player data pretty much set up. But the last thing that we want to do is we want to add leader stats to this as well. Leader stats are incredibly simple to set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function towards the top of our script called create leader stats and this is going to accept a player then the first thing is is we're going to create a variable for the player's profile so we're going to say local profile equals manager dot profiles and index that with the player and if not profile so if the profile doesn't exist then we're just going to return n and stop the function right there otherwise let's go ahead and create a variable for the leader stats so local leader stats equals instance dot new folder and parent that to the player we want to set the name of that folder to leader stats spelled exactly like that and now we'll create the leader stats for both the clicks and our gems currency so we're going to say local clicks equals instance dot new number value parent that to the leader stats then we need to make sure that we set the name of that to clicks and we need to make sure that we set the value of that to the profile dot data dot clicks so now we have the clicks value created the next thing we're going to do is create the gems value as well so we're going to say local gems make sure that we change all of those variables just like that change the name of it make sure that's parented to the leader stats and then also get the data as well so instead of clicks we're going to say gems and there we go now we need to make sure that we actually call this function and where are we going to do that well we're going to call it it right after we set the player's profile in the manager table so we're going to say create leader stats pass to the player just like that and there we go now we can then go ahead start up our game and test this out and make sure that it all works so as we can see in the output it says profile service roblox api services unavailable data will not be saved but it is loaded so that's good and then we can also see that we have the leader stats up here as well which means that this is working perfectly now if you did want your data to save all you'd have to do is go to the game settings go into security enable studio access to api services hit save and then when you start up your game it should save your data perfectly and we can even see the message it does say that the data will be saved so ladies and gentlemen with that being said that's going to be it for this episode we now have working player data and we'll expand on that in the next episode as well hopefully you guys did enjoy if you did make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified when we upload more roblox development content and i have a patreon if you guys like this for me and again access to a ton of scripts and the game files including the ones that i made in this episode there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out with that being said i'll see you guys in the next episode